This is yours. We'll put that right there. And you can rest your feet on the rudders. It won't. It won't bother me. Well, what we'll do is we'll do a do a short takeoff, get out of there, fly around, let you feel it, come back in, do a short landing. Okay. The center stick's nice. I like the center stick, and you can customize the height, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I have it set up where I'm, when I'm sitting in the airplane, neutral is right there. Yeah. And then I just rotate my wrist for uh, uh, doing turns. Probably the bubble doors. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mexico, driving experimental 6128 Quebec is back taxi in 36 for Mexico. Have you ever been in an experimental before? No, I haven't. Okay, great. Well, you know, all experimentals, you know, all different kit manufacturers, uh, they fly very similar, very light, very responsive compared to, you know, 172 or 182. That's the nice thing, and then you don't have to trim it all the time like you do the 182 when you lower the flaps. It doesn't get that heavy. So that, those two things I like, you know, and then you add a little bit of power, you're out of any situation very quickly because a lot of power to weight. So we're going to do a run up here. We got the Rotax 100 horse 912S, and we're going to run it up to 4,000 RPM. Check our ignition. Should be very little drop. Let it sit there for it. Make sure. Back to both. Left. Both. Controls clear and free. We've got fuel. My fuel valve's on. And we're going to lower the flaps one notch. We got this new manual. We call it the Robert Cube. Uh, flap handle, and that's come standard now with our new fly, our 701 match hole kit. The temperature is great because we've been flying earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the brakes on, add power, stick about three quarters back, release the brakes, nose will come up pretty quick, and then fly from there. Mexico traffic experimental 6128 Quebec is going to be departed. 36 will be a northwest departure for a local flight Mexico. And approach is clear. Got good control. Back to travel gate two, Mike. We are maneuvering in the area about uh, nine miles northwest of the field at 1500 Mexico. Nose comes up. Now just fly right on off of it. Pretty quick takeoff, wasn't it? Oh yeah. Now you take half the weight off, you know, take one person out, you take off about half that distance. Because you was asking about how short, well, weight's really a big factor in these. And we'll bring up the flaps. Excellent visibility. I was just noticing that, I could say straight ahead. Yep, yep. Temperatures look good, we'll check everything. Mexico, traffic spare mode 6128 Quebec, departing the pattern northwest, and uh, we'll stay about three miles just uh, north of the airport. Uh, 
I rest my arm on my leg and just do this, or cross country, I just lay my arm across. It just makes a nice, uh, simple autopilot. Okay. Yeah, you kind of float around like a leaf, but uh, it's, it's, it's very nice and really relaxing. Sure. We'll climb up a couple hundred more feet. setting. Rudder, you got a lot of rudder authority because it is a full moving rudder. I typically run it uh, 5,000 to 5,500 RPM. Nice thing about the 701 is when you're in a turn, you can see in a turn. It's not like a 70 or, or Cessna 172. You're, you're in Alaska like you're where you've been used to flying. You can see right over the wing there. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the, you know, Chris, when he designed the 701, he didn't like flying a 172. You couldn't see in a turn. Uh, the, it's not heavy at all. You don't have to trim it. Add a little bit of rudder in the turn. Steepen it up a little bit. The nice thing about the 701, it flies like an ultralight, but you can fly at 30 mile an hour winds is not an issue. Whereas with ultralights, you know, 10 mile an hour, and that's... Go ahead, feel it. Butters you don't have to worry about. A lot lighter than a 172, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is fingertip control. It is. It is. But you can let go, and it's just going to be right there. Yeah, I like this. But isn't it just so nice and stable? And even in a bumpy, turbulent day, you don't get those hard, you know, bangs. You just kind of float up, come back down, float up. All right, let me do some slow flight here. All right. Uh, bring the nose up, get into white, and then I'll lower the flaps a little bit. We'll just fly it in the 40 mile an hour range. Don't need to trim it, it's not heavy. If you're just sightseeing or uh, looking for those moose, you know. Mm -hmm. There we go, there's about 40 miles an hour. Very stable, definitely we can get a lot slower. We can get it down in the 30s. That's a nice uh, uh, MCA flight right there. Very controllable, stick's not that heavy. Doesn't stall, just develops a high sink rate, and that's how you're going to land. You're going to use that high sink rate to, to land short, but you got to use the power and pitch all the time you're, all the time you're adjusting. Yeah, so you're here at the rudder workshop, and uh, how's it coming along so far? You've been working on it about three, four hours. Yeah, I'm just about ready to start riveting. All right. Is it everything you expected, or better, or worse? Or? Oh, yeah. It's, it goes together too easy now. You've been watching the videos, though, haven't oh, you? Oh, yes, I have. Uh, so. Well, good, and I think what we're going to do this afternoon, I was, uh, you know, telling the other participants where I think we're going to pull out a fuselage, uh, the parts, and uh, click it all together because we had it at Oshkosh, and, and we need to assemble it, and since it's such a small rudder group, uh, advantage is, hey, let's, uh, let's teach you guys some other things, too. Yeah, let's build a 701. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I really like the 701. It's, uh, it really fits most customers pretty well. Uh, very, very easy to fly, maintain. Uh, like I said, I've got 2,200 hours on my 701, and uh, 
you know, somebody says, well, won't you build a new one or, or sell and build a new one? Well, you know, I kind of like this one, you know? <laughs> And you know, if you was, uh, you're going to be taking it in the short strips and stuff, uh, let's see here, give you a kind of an idea, bird's eye view, let's see here, trying to, I mean, I've landed in these fields out here when the crops aren't in. I don't see anything right off hand, let me look here. Even down there, that waterway, you can land in there pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Thing is, you know, you just need to build yourself up to it. Don't start off very short. You know, work yourself, learn the airplane, learn your systems, and then start uh, building. Because there's going to be some times, eh, that's a little bit too short. Mm -hmm. And it's not the plane, uh, more likely it's the pilot. That's exactly. Or the conditions are just not right. I've had days where I'm glad I had a, a 2,000 foot runway because I had to keep power, the wind was gusting factors and, you know, just had to fly it all the way down. Mexico traffic, experimental 6128, Quebec is one mile north inbound landing, 36 Mexico. All right, we've got gas, undercarriage, mixture prop seat belts. Yeah, it's a beautiful day to fly. Yeah, right. Finally started cooling off, overcast day. I'm not used to flying in flatland. <laughs> it is, it's a little flat. And you guys in Alaska, you always fly with all these mountains and you got them all named as a, they all look the same to me. Yes. Well, if you go too far south, you're going to hit I-70. Mm -hmm. If you go too far east, you're going to hit the Mississippi River. So, <laughs> yeah. So beam the numbers, bring back power, bring the nose up to bleed off the airspeed, get a little bit of white, the white arcs, deploy the flaps, and start my descent, base to final from there on. Uh, if you want a speed, I would say in the 50s for final, and then when it gets short, short final, I'm probably in the high 40s, 40s, and then it just drops off drastically after the... It's a typical airplane where or this airplane you don't uh, approach is not 1.3 over the stall speed like you do in most conventional aircraft. Otherwise, you're just coming in, nose up, a lot of power, and it just doesn't work as well. Mexico traffic, Spermo 701 is base to final, 3-6 Mexico. All right, we're gonna add another notch of flaps. Total flaps is 15 degrees, but it's the full length called the flapper on. Here we go. And Mexico, traffic experiment 6128 Quebec is short final 36 Mexico. Keep that nose down all the time. You can slip it, but there's no reason. Just bring the nose up a little bit, develop a sink rate. Still got a long way to the end of the runway. Now I'm going to adjust power and pitch, just going by feel. Oh, that feels really good there. And once your main wheels touch, chop the power. And I didn't really do anything extreme no. at all. No. And you didn't add that much power. No, just it just takes a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. But you practice on that and uh, you just spend all day take off and landing, take off and landing. And you really, and I wasn't even very proficient right there because I don't fly it every day like I used to, but mm -hmm. uh, I used to be able to really just nail it every time.
Well, now we have to get back and finish that rudder. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. Maybe I'll show you guys how to drill out a rivet now. It's time to do that. Okay. Uh, you how to will correct the mistakes. How to correct the mistake, exactly. How far, uh, when you can do a crash country, how far are your legs? You know, I used to, when I was uh, quite a bit younger, I used to fly, you know, uh, it didn't matter how long I was in the air. You know, I used to do, I'd say three hours, and the time I landed it was three and a half, four hours. Mm -hmm. Now I like to do two to three. I just like to, you know, short stops, get down, relax, and enjoy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's what happens when you get older. Yeah, the bladder doesn't have the capacity the right. brain does, yeah. Right. And I believe I've got, I've got 11 gallon tanks in here. We've got an option for 12 gallon tanks. Gonna shut it down, it's just with the key switch. Mm -hmm. 